All right, music is not his only driving force. He was he is the chairman and on the board of directors of Create Now, a nonprofit organization founded in 1996 to help challenge troubled children's lives through creative arts and mentoring. He's been called a combination of Tony Robbins, Bono, and Ringo. Please welcome to Drum Smack, Mr. Mark Schulman. All right. And my mother said that. <laughs> I did. No, it's an amazing <laughs> introduction. I'm going to take you with me everywhere. All You're right. Everywhere. I'll be Excuse there, man, guys. because, I mean, Excuse you travel guys. the world. It just smells like drums in here. Yeah, it it smells like so? sweaty drummers. I love it. <laughs> we I'm, move in. No but, there's there's only be. actually two drummers in here. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You oh, that's right. and him. But you're a bass player. You're a drummer's best friend. Yeah. Oh, thanks. I Normally, know. I get them the butt of every joke. I know I, drummers. I, I, you know, I, I come bearing gifts. I know drummers. Oh. I know some. <laughs> you know some. You know, I know, you know somebody who knows somebody, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know somebody that knows that guy. Hey, knows this yeah, guy yeah. over here. You need something care of you. I, you know, I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy. <laughs> so, last time you were on. He plays drums. You know. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Last time you were on, we did. You were um, we had you on because we were talking about the uh, Bruce Becker was on, and yes. uh, we were talking about the Triple, triple threat, threat Drum Camp. Triple Threat Drum Camp. We had a ball. That was so much fun. Yeah, and tell us a little bit of how that was, man. Was well, that... you know, it's it's amazing because it, it it was it was born under the uh, in the context that we're all students of the master Freddie Gruber, sure. right? And. Yeah. Uh, so that that that's how the the point that unifies Daniel, Bruce, and myself. Um, but it was such a m multifaceted weekend because you have Bruce, who is actually my teacher, because I studied with Freddie as well. And Bruce just has so much technical prowess. And you have Daniel, who's an amazing technical player and an amazing historian, and me that just you know I can do a, a stick flip or two, you know. <laughs> but it was a really nice. You do a lot and more than I, that, I actually man. did conducted a, a whole day. In the recording studio, oh, which cool. I did a DVD called "A Day in the Recording Studio," and that was mm. based on the fact that I used to do these drumming recording seminars, and it was really fantastic to get like a group of drummers in and be able to spend like anywhere from ten to fourteen, sometimes as long as sixteen hours together in the studio Ma. because it was very interactive, and very hands-on, and everybody gets to play, yeah. and everybody gets to hear what they do, and everybody gets to comment and yeah. learn from what everybody else does, and I love recording. It's funny because I'm I'm on the road so much. Yeah, but I just adore recording. Uh, yeah. It's really been a passion of mine since I was like 13 years old. I Were you focused a lot on like placement, like like miking techniques and all that, or I, it's, or like it's, it's every, you know, everything? It's soup to nuts. It's everything. It's from <clears throat> from signal path to mic technique to drum tuning to charting to musical choices yeah. to uh, I really kind of hit everything. And it features my wife playing drums in it as well. There so you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. But That's you know, the nice thing about that particular DVD is um, I wanted to make it myself. Actually, my wife's production partner, uh, Sam Gracie, he flew in from the UK. He's a BBC cinematographer. And oh, I nice. wanted, he sort of directed it because I said, I want to make it myself. And I thought I was going to distribute it myself. Yeah. And then after it was done, I thought we made the DVD exactly the way we want it. I'm not a distributor. No, and that's why I, you know I talked to Hudson. They're like, "Yeah, we love it. We'll take it." So I said, "This is great. Hudson can distribute it, and everybody's happy." Where so. can people get that video? On the Hudson site. The Hudson right. site. Yeah, you can Amazon. Down, you, you can you well you can buy the hard copy or you can download. It. You can get it on Amazon. But I say go to Hudson site and just download it on your computer or your iPad. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's the most useful that way, I think. Well, that's fantastic. So I mean. Not only are you a performer, but uh, like you know, I mean, it seems like you give back a lot to you know. I mean, like you're part of this foundation. Um, you're uh, an author, and it's and, all true. and you know, speaker. It's all true. And, and uh, talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you we're know, talking it's, it's, about you. Here's the thing. I am. I've been involved with Create now. Oh my gosh, for maybe. 14 years. Oh, yeah. And that is actually the creator, Jill Gurr, is the master woman of this. She's the most, one of the most giving people I know. And the idea was to help, you know, what we call the forgotten kids. Yeah. The kids that have been abandoned, the kids that have been neglected, the kids that have been incarcerated. Sure. But all as a result of challenging times. And the I idea thought you were going to say as a result of playing the drums. It was like, uh-oh, if I don't. <laughs> the more drummers we have, the, the greater these kids are, really. Yeah. Um, and she came up with this idea. Well, we live in Los Angeles, and she was a um, script editor, and she thought, what if we combined 
all people in the arts to mentor these kids as a means of giving them some focus and some passion and some direction yeah. and some purpose. And that's how it started. And I just have been sort of, I look at myself as her champion. I mean, I was the chairman of the board for a minute. I've been on the board of directors, but I'm actually a guy that likes to go in. I've been to every detention camp in Los Angeles, and I will go and work with the kids because I like to experience the transformation. How do they, how do they treat you? I mean, like, here, here you are. I mean, you, you, you play with all these amazing artists. I mean, Pink, Cher, Foreigner, just to name a few. And then you walk in. What kind of reaction do you get? Because some of these, I mean, do, do kids, I mean, they have to well, be just glowing, right? Or are they kind of like, who are you, man? They're actually, it's actually, <laughs> they're like, it's, more like no. it's a little bit of both. But yeah. the audiences tend to be challenging because they tend to be on guard. Mm, because sure. they, they don't, you know, if you've been, had a, had a challenging life, you don't tend to trust people. So I know they're. Yeah. I know when I walk into these situations that they're not going to necessarily trust me or sure. believe me. So I try to communicate with them at a level that they're going to get. Um, one of the components I will usually, I'm, I'm a cancer survivor, and I was fortunate I had testicular cancer, which is one of the most survivable, you know, curable cancers. And um, I feel really fortunate and blessed that that's all I had. Yeah. Um, but when I tell them my experience of having cancer, um, it, it, it kind of, lets them know, know that I've undergone challenges as well. And I think, like with any audience, you want to read your audience, you want to be effective. And I don't right. do it for ego reasons, but I do it because if I want them to listen, I want them to get the message. Right. You and gotta connect somehow. To be, so yeah. you wanna connect. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll find a way to connect. And a sure. lot of times, like, you know, what I'll do is I'll do a free form. I bring my own PA and I'll invite the kids up to freestyle and I'll play drums while they're freestyling. We, you know, it's, nice. we yeah. connect. Cool. Um, That's and fantastic. we just did an amazing event for Create Now, I, I, I came up with this concept called the Night of Great Sax because a you know, good old friend of mine is Dave <laughs> Cos. <laughs> yeah, wah wah. <laughs> Dave Cos, Gra Grammy Award winning sax player. Another buddy of mine, Michael sure. Linton, both like, you know, smooth jazz sax players. But yeah. we knew that we could create sort of a high end event that would draw people and raise a lot of money. So I, my studio partner, one of my best friends, Julian Coriel, who's a beast on guitar, Julian was the MD, and Michael and Dave agreed to do it. And we put together this amazing band um, with. Uh, uh, Michael Bluestein, who I played with Foreigner, and we did this event where we kind of just rehearsed that day, and it was just this kind of high, high end, you know, wine and, and booze and really great food. And, and <laughs> the idea, the thing that with most nonprofits is 95% of the nonprofits, it's a constant struggle just to stay alive. And you want to create change with the programs and with your, with your mission statement. And you have to spend half of your time, or more than half of your time, worrying about raising funds, funds. just to you know, stay operational. Sure. So my thing is like, well, if I can do, you know, like I brought Vivian Campbell's a good, good buddy of mine, the guitar player for Def Leppard, we used to play in a band together. And, you know, Vivian, we do like a, a dinner with Vivian Campbell, and all the Def Leppard fans will pay like, you know, 500 bucks. <laughs> and, you know, Vivian just has to come and hang out. And, and, you know, you can raise a lot of money by utilizing the power of the people you, you know, that you work with. And so... It's everybody's duty to give back. Yeah. You know, I think that musicians, drummers, tend to be very giving, tend to be very philanthropic, and yeah. I just I bass like players to use, are definitely not. No, we're not. You know, bass players are <laughs> some of my favorite people on this planet. Perfect. Can I have a drink with me? Oh, never mind. <laughs> um, Do you have any stories about certain uh, people that you encountered that have gone on to? become musicians or anything like that? Well, there have been, one of the things that I did is I was, I was, I have a recording studio and I brought, um, I, I would offer, whenever I do a program at a detention camp, I say, anybody, if you take the initiative and you contact me and you can get my phone number and my email address directly from Create Now, if you call me, you can have a free session at my studio. Mm. And at first I thought, man, all these kids are gonna be calling me, but you realize that, there, there's a lot of fear and trepidation. People yeah. don't just reach out. Right. So the few kids that have have been absolutely amazing yeah, and astounding. That's and probably that's cool. you know one of the greatest success stories is I started mentoring this kid, um, Michael Monroe. His name was KL, like Kid Lyrical, and uh, oh, wow. rapper. And I just started bringing him to the studio, mentoring him, and then he ended up. Uh, fathering a child and the child is now my goddaughter Maya and Kale oh, wow. is still a rapper and he's doing very well and so there's stories like that. He might have saved some lives. Well, 
it's, it, it is it really is about saving lives enhancing lives but trust yeah. me you're saving lives because if you you know it's very interesting you, the original question was are, are the audiences challenging yeah. they're really challenging I mean I do yeah. corporate speaking co co you know college events tons of drum clinics this is the most challenging audience by far but you know one of the great, my great mentors and teacher, uh, my life coach, Dr. Jim Samuel says, you know, if you can get 10% of the audience, then you're doing well, especially in that particular context. And there's usually about 10 or 15% of them, like, as I'm speaking, I, I see, I see the lights in. going yeah. off. Yeah. You see, like, something's switching. Something's, yeah. because just position yourself to take enough of an interest, because I'm not getting paid. They know I'm not getting paid. They know that right. I'm there. I'm a celebrity drummer, whatever. Uh, yeah. But if they perceive that I'm there and I'm just willing to give them my time, they know, well, this guy's right. for real. Yeah. yeah. Some some respect. And then I start offering all that stuff. So. That's cool. That's great. That's amazing. What a way to like give back, man. That's that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, you know, speaking of studios, you you still uh, part of West Triad Studios mm -hmm. in Venice? Julian Coriel, my studio partner, my other studio partner, Eric Goble. These guys are a couple of my best friends, and we just have a ball. It's funny because it's it. It was <laughs> we originally were going to call it Wet Triad because we're right near the the, the, the beach, <laughs> the beach, and we sort of break. videoed that. We got to take a break. Yeah, we're uh, you finish your thought, and then we're going to go to break. Yeah. Well, I, just very simply, yeah, we we do separate projects and we do projects together, and it's really brilliant because I you know we do everything from playing on each other's stuff, co-writing stuff. Julian and I are writing a kids musical right now, and I'm not going to talk a lot about it. I'll talk about that the next time I come on. It's a little All more right. relevant. All right. I'm very excited. All right, right yeah, on. That's great. I love those guys. So. All right, right that's on, amazing. man. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Excellent. All right, everybody, we're talking with Mark Showman. You're watching Drum Smack here on T-Radio V. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. We're you are watching rather Drum Smack here on T Radio V, and of course that was Mark Showman. Mark, I had a question. Uh, of course, we just had Drew on from Roland. Dude, where'd you get that footage? <laughs> <laughs> Scaring YouTube for the most. Hey man, we stuff. you know we surprise a lot all of our guests. Styles. Everyone's just like, where did you get that? You're capturing uh, all well, the hairstyles from every drummer's past. <laughs> I know, uh, right? That's amazing. When it's out there, man, you know, people just like, you know, especially people that sexting and all that stuff, yeah. when it's out there, it just that. doesn't it's go to there. like the person you're sending it to. Yeah. <laughs> and there's ways to find it. Isn't that right, Brad? I mean, yeah. you're like the computer that guy guy. Hence. He's that guy guy, yeah. <laughs> you're that <laughs> guy guy. Hey, that guy guy guy. Yeah. So, hey. you, 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 hey, you've been. Uh, hey. This is for my daughter, by the way. Nice. Yeah. Cute. One says boo, everyone. Aww. One says boo. And if you look Boo. upside down, it says oob. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, you're, you're, uh, it's a great okay, transition to share. Yes. Yeah, we got that other system. Yeah. Freddie Gruby used to say, I know you're serious, but are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired, everything else is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so when you're, um, you know, obviously we had Drew on, and uh, you're a Roland endorser. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the stuff. Um, I mean, because we're, I mean, everyone's, you know, he said the word that you're starting to hear a lot now is hybrid. And uh, do you talk a little bit about your setup and uh, some of the stuff that you're using? Because you have this amazing Gretsch kit and uh, this amazing yeah. snare drum, signature snare drum. Yes. That is oh, the yeah. best selling 
ever in Gretsch Hitch, Gretsch Hitch history. That's amazing. Say that three times fast. I, I can't. can't. <laughs> my, brother, my, my buddy Roger just texted me and said, stay on the mic, brother, so I better eat the mic. Yeah, that's <laughs> that a, Drew, what did you so. eat? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> anyway, okay, I'm going to eat the mic. Um... <laughs> Not, I just yeah. got real silly. What's going on? I Do love I it. Just, like pump like Bring it on. into the air or something. Yeah, yeah. it's um, the laughing gas they pump yeah, through the vents. You know, I, 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 you know, when I was doing the last pink tour, I talked to Stephen, Steve Fisher, the rolling guy, and uh, he said, "There's more than one." Just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "You know, you really should use a full rolling kit on stage." I said, "That'd be great if it was musically appropriate, because the the pink gig is really almost all acoustic." Right. But getting back with Cher, because I did Cher's last you know the two big tours and one of the Vegas stints and um, there's a lot of electronic stuff a lot of dance stuff so it's totally appropriate so I you know I was gonna just incorporate the Roland stuff and then I woke up one morning I said man <laughs> I gotta use a TD 30 baby because it's really appropriate <laughs> nice. is, that you, to, is that how you told that to yourself yeah well I told that I to my, my, my yeah I told that myself <laughs> self so well, you listen drum spec drum spec um <laughs> No, John That's Bell, right. my, my tech, I, I, I said, I called him up. I said, I have a vision. <laughs> and it's a V. It came to me. It's, it's an, a, an electronic kit to my left and an acoustic kit to my right coming to a V. So it's sort of like 50 50. Um, and so that's wow. what kind of and then so Pell got on it and that's what we created. So it's a it's a full TD30 kit, full with all the cymbals, all the toms, and then my acoustic kit. And then I have some triggers. I use that that trigger that uh, Drew was the talking BT1. about. The BT1. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, how awesome is that, by the way? That it's seems totally really cool. Awesome. Do you mount it on your drum, or do you have it like on a cowbell mount I, or something? I have it on a cowbell mount yeah. above my two toms in the middle, okay. and, I, and I use it like for like cowbell and things like that that are, hard, <laughs> that are, are more challenging to mic um, and, and different samples and stuff. So sure. the hybrid for this particular gig is perfect because there's a lot, and actually there's a lot of percussion stuff I'm doing as well. Nice. And so I'm, I'm always reaching out to the left and playing like percussion sounds. So the integration is... It's musical. Hey. Drummers, it's... Oh, I'm looking at a bass player. Drummers, yeah, it's you. musical. <laughs> thank you. That's what it's about, being musical. Hey. Well, that's fantastic. So you got you got the, uh, uh, the the brain, and you got the BT1 and stuff like that. You, do you trigger... If I only had a brain. <laughs> if I only had one. Do you trigger your kick, you said, in your snare? or just No. Not on this gig. I used, On the pink gig, I did. I would have uh, triggers on... I had a 20-inch bass drum that was a uh, had a lot of uh, mostly triggered sounds, and I had my satellite snare that was uh, actually before the Mark Schulman signature snare drum came out. Oh, there was selling, life before that drumming. <laughs> yeah, the, the best <laughs> selling. Another. I want to see. I want to have you say it again. Um, best selling snare drum in Gretsch history. Ah, hey. signature product. Actually, yes. can't yeah. say it's the best selling <laughs> snare drum. Oh, yeah. fair um, enough. <laughs> thank you. And, yeah. Direction. Uh, where was I? I'm distracting myself. Or is it you distracted <laughs> me? I yeah. distracted I yourself. Pink triggering you kick drum. Myself. Yeah, so I did, I I'd use more triggers on the pink tour because I had a lot less, uh, far less pads. But right. with this, because I have the fully integrated TD30, it's it's fantastic. It's and pretty the awesome. The sensitivity, it's it's great. I feel like 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 two drummers, two different drummers, yeah. because the way that I approach playing the electronic kit, because it's stylistically so different than what I'm playing on the acoustic kit. So it's really fun for me. It's musically yeah. diverse. So are you going, uh, uh, you said you're leaving for tour in uh, what, six days? Six days. Oh yeah. yeah. And uh, where can people six. see you play? You're gonna be, uh, I mean, well, staying I play stateside? Well, I with Cher, or? that's C-H-E-R. <laughs> huh, say that it's again. It's S-H-A-R-E. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also, here's the thing, if you go to my website, <laughs> MarkShulman.com, right. or follow me on Twitter, at MarkyPlanet, um, I do, I, I love to keep busy. My sure. wife, Lisa, knows I'm a workaholic. I, that's awesome. The only guy that's more busy than me is Rich Redmond. You know? <laughs> yeah, a few man. guys, maybe yeah. Kenny. Yeah, hard enough. But um, I do a lot of clinics on my off days. I do corporate speaking, so I'm, I'm on off days. I spend my time doing things. So I will be doing a number of drum clinics. I actually had six events scheduled that have been had been canceled, and we're trying to uh, rework them. Whoa. Josh Mile is booking stuff for me. Oh, because Josh the, is pulling his hair out pause. because because uh, yeah. uh, the, uh, almost two months of gigs have been postponed. Cher sure. is doing great now, but I've been off the road two months unexpectedly. I shouldn't oh. even be here now. Actually, right. I'm not. 
<laughs> so, um, it's a hologram, everybody. So we are, we're, we're rescheduling stuff, and I'll be doing clinics and, and master classes and different stuff in different cities. You just got to kind of pay attention because I we're in the process of rescheduling them. Well, uh, we, we definitely have want to have you back on because you're in the process. It's uh, you, wrote, you, you, you wrote a yeah. you wrote a book, and, I wrote a book. Uh, and it's going to be different Here's the story name. Of the book. I really wrote a book. quick. We're, we're actually coming up to the end of the show, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I wrote a book. It has a title. It's been advertised a lot, but I never published it. Um, Minor deeds. Can I now, say what the title and now, is? And now I'm well. Now I'm changing the title of the book and so changing I won't say the scope the title. slightly. But I will say it's a book that will change everybody's life. Whether you're a performer, a speaker, a teacher. Or anybody who wants to communicate anything to anybody and want to get wants to be able to get beyond the point of fear to confidence. That's what it's based on. And I interviewed fifty people, all yeah, like top so, performers so the, in all areas so, of life. Wow. But you but the I said the scope is gonna change so I'm negotiating with a couple of different publishers right now and we're going for a name change and we're going for a slight content shift, but it's gonna be very valuable and I work very hard, I'm very proud That's of it. That's great. But uh, we will that's wait fantastic. to see the ETA. exactly yeah. what it will be called. ETA. Not sure. Okay. And that's the thing. I'm not Stay sure. Stay tuned. I wish I could so see we're it. gonna we're gonna bump into you at Nam or around that time. I yeah, hope. Yeah, I'm on maybe. the road. Are you Nam, not coming back for that at all? I can't because the, the the dates have been. You lucked yeah. out. <laughs> so yeah. after you get back. I love back, Nam. Yeah, that's I when I get to see all my friends. I don't get to see, I know, you get yeah. see them, but you don't see. You, you know? think like it's these great. tour coordinators would kind of. Yeah. Do that because so, oh, so yeah, many they, other yeah, people they, are going to They care there. a lot about the music merchant show. <laughs> the share fans. <laughs> it sure <laughs> seems like it's just everyone's no, there except you're not going to be there. This year, so uh, it's, it's going to be. Well, so it won't be everyone. <laughs> yeah, it be won't. everyone minus me. But thank you. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> it is a pleasure. Jeff. Man, definitely. Thank you so much for coming on. Guys. Mark Schulman, everybody. Man. Wonderful. And-